dear ones, welcome to Touch by the Lord, a program that will build your faith, hope, and trust in the Lord. We are so grateful to the Most High God for our lives. Why do you think I always talk about life? If you have not gotten to a place that you were almost losing your life, you will not understand. But you and I are alive. Let's give thanks to the Most High God. Have you said thank you to God since you got up from your bed? If you have not, take two minutes to say thank you to the one who holds your life in his palms. Do you have any testimony to share? Please take our numbers on the screen. Call us and we'll give you that opportunity to share, to bless someone out there. Please take our email address, send us an email and we'll respond to you. Today is a special edition of Touch by the Lord. It's been three years and we thank God for sustaining us. Today, I am the one who will share the testimony. And I know by the time I'm done, you will be blessed. Our thought for today says, the creator is the only one who knows what part to fix when there is a need for a part to be replaced. And how fast the part can be fixed depends on how close you are to the factory or the creator. I hope you understand this. If you buy a brand new car and you know where you bought it and there is a need to replace the part, you will just go to where the car was manufactured and then you would request for your part and it will be fixed. We were all created by God Almighty and he knows what he planted in us. We have a lot of parts and to be able to be secured be in a good relationship with the king of kings so that in times of trouble you will be able to fall on him and you will not be disappointed thank you for taking time to watch us most thursdays today i'm going to share a very important testimony about me those of you who followed me from three years when i started sharing my testimony all that I was sharing meant that the enemy has always wanted my life. But because Bible says our lives are hidden in Christ and in God, the Lord did not give me to the enemy. But I've gone through phases of trials and temptations. You remember the last episode before other people came in to share their testimonies. I had an accident that almost took me to the morgue. And by the message of God, I sneezed and God brought me back to life. If you would remember, I told you that my, my mom used to cry, Father, who will marry my daughter? She used to be very beautiful, but now her face is full of scars. But after God was done with me, I had a very handsome man of God to marry me. This is the power of God. We got married, we went to our honeymoon, we enjoyed ourselves, and we came back to Ghana. Unknown to me, I had taken seed. And I started bleeding profusely. I didn't do anything. We were, I was rushed to the hospital. But my husband said before he got married to me, they told him that you think you are going to marry. You'll be a widower in a year. So when I was attacked that night, the enemy told him that, didn't I tell you that you'll be a widower? I was almost gone. So he rushed me from here to Tema. And then um, they rushed me to the theater. And the doctor said, I had had miscarriage. They did the DNC. And then later the findings were that I had a lot of fibroids in my womb and I need an emergency surgery 
to correct it. Remember, I told you guys that I was married to a prophet. And because I even met him was a prayer that he made for me that I had a breakthrough at my workplace. This time, we were given another bad news. My husband and my parents told the doctor that, Doc, you can go ahead with the surgery. The day was booked for the surgery. They took me to the theater. My parents and my husband were waiting. The doctor said um, the surgery would take like 20 minutes. But my, my, my husband said he saw the doctor who was performing the surgery going in and out of the theater, which is not normal. So he became a bit frightened. But it took some hours for the doctor to come back to tell them that they were done. My husband, after everything, asked the doctor to give him the sample so that he can take it to his uncle, who was a doctor at 37. So he will see whether the fibroids were cancerous. The doctor told my husband that, sorry, we didn't find anything. Everybody was amazed. Doctor, but you did a scan and you saw that there were fibroids. That's why she had the miscarriage. He said, I'm very sorry. That is what I saw with the, um, the scan. But there was nothing. My dear one, when they give you a report, don't be in a haste to respond. Because that report you have been given by the doctor or any other person can take your life. Because don't forget that the enemy is roaming like a lion, seeking who he will devour. He's always on, on set to hate a child of God. So don't be in a haste to respond to bad news. The doctor did not find anything. And that is what he told my parents. But when I was admitted in the hospital, every now and then the doctor would come and ask me, are you all right? Are you okay? Every time he will spend some time with me, asking me whether I'm all right. We didn't understand why. But after I was discharged, I was supposed to come back and I was going in and out of hospital till I was well. My dear one, the doctor knew what he had done. He made a mistake, but he did not tell anyone. At the end of the report, they said I had adhesions. What are adhesions? If you are taken through surgery and they don't do it well, or the things are not placed at the right places, the organs come together and you, you suffer from adhesions. And it's another dangerous thing that will take you into another surgery. But this time, my husband said no. We trusted God. And after a while, we went back and there were no adhesions. If you are listening to me, know that the one who created you has the parts that you always will need. Don't be in a haste to respond to negative news. Don't be in a haste to respond to the reports that you get. It might lead to your death. Bible says that Hope maketh not ashamed. Anytime you are hearing negative news, hope in the Lord and pray to him so that you would have the answers to your prayers. We went through that phase. And the second phase was that one day I had a lot of pain and I had to go back to the hospital. This time we changed the hospitals because we saw that the gyne was not too good. Bible says our lives are hidden in Christ and in God. When you are even going to a hospital, ask God, Father, where is this place? Am I supposed to go there? Because sometimes if you don't ask, you go and meet one agent of darkness. That will compound your problems. So we went to another hospital. The doctor was very good, taking good care of me. 
But one day I saw that I had been in pain, constant pain at the end of the month. So we were in the office, my, myself, my husband, and I told him that I want to go and see the guy. When I went, I had to be scanned. The doctor finished scanning. When he was scanning me, most of the time when he's doing the scans, we talk, but this time he didn't talk. His face was in a way. After the, the, the scan, he said, can you have a seat? And then he started talking. Susan, I don't know what is happening, but I see a, a big ovarian cyst that has taken your, your ovaries. It's so big that it is growing so fast and is coming close to your womb. And I, it looks like it's cancerous. He talked a lot, but he saw that I was quiet. So in, when he was talking, he asked me, are you okay? I said, yes, doc, but you are talking, so I cannot talk. He says, but you're not saying anything. I said, no. Doc, I want you to finish, then I can talk. He says, we have to do it so fast. I'm so scared for you. I'm so worried because it can take your life very, very soon. None of that report shook me. So after he says, what will you say? Because if you want us to do the surgery, maybe next week it will be done because it will save your life. After everything, I told him that, Doc, I'm going to talk to my husband first. I'll get back to you. Then I left his office. Immediately I sat in my car. I addressed the enemy who appeared some years back. And I told him, devil, you see, you were talking through my doctor. I am not afraid. This time, you will not get me. I sat in my car and I drove to my husband's office in Chowlu. They gave me the, the scan the pictures. So I showed it to him. He looked at them and he smiled. And he asked me, are you afraid? I said, no. But I want to take, if you permit me, I'll take the day off. I want to go and rest at home. He says, you're fine, you can go. So when I went, I just thanked the Lord, lifted my two hands, and say, Father, thank you for this report. I am not scared. I know you will come through for me. Then I, I didn't sleep on my bed. I lay down on the carpet in our bedroom. And I worshiped the Lord. And I prayed. And I slept. In, after some time, I don't know, maybe the Holy Ghost um, woke, woke me up. When I opened my eyes on the fly, I saw a, a lot of feet. A lot, multitude of feet. Like, it was like a video. Then I heard the voice and the song in the voice. He says, Abba, foam, pim, pim. Echa me, washia. Odin, sampa, abra me. Yesu si wewe Yesu si wewe Yesu si wewe Odin sempa abremi Then I said God so you are here too Wow What is the meaning of the song and it's a message he says, multitude of angels have gathered around me. And they brought me the news, the good news that God says he's done. The good news is that Jesus says he's done. Then I woke up. Immediately, I called my husband on the phone to give him the good news. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back. 
I've been listening to the wonderful healings that God gave me. Do you have any testimony to share? Do you have any life story to bless people with? Please take our numbers on the screen. Call us and we'll give you that opportunity. God bless you for always tuning in to TBL TV, Facebook Live, to watch us. You will never be the same. Like I said earlier, today is a special edition. God is going to heal every disease that you are suffering from. So don't go anywhere. Wait till the end and the Lord will heal you. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. TBL TV, like, comment, and share. You will never be the same. Before we went on a break, I had had the encounter from the angels with a song, and I had to quickly call my husband. When I called him, he was in the office, all right, but he was also praying. And so he, he said, when he comes, we'll thank God together. So he came home in the evening, and we thanked the Lord. The next two weeks, at the end of a month, there was no pain. The following month, no pain. The third month, no pain. So I, I decided to go back to the doctor. So I went back and I said, Doc, I've realized that it's been three months and I don't have any pain. So I want you to scan me. He says, are you sure? I said, yes, doc. He says, when you are not coming, I was worried. I said, I was okay, doc. Please check me and let's see. So I lied down and he started scanning me. The screen is in front of me, so I was looking at it. Most of the time we chat. He says, Susie, did you go for surgery? I said, doc, if I had gone for any surgery, you would have seen that I have fresh wounds. He says, so how come it's disappeared? No. This is serious. I said, Doc, what is happening? He says, I cannot find the ovarian cyst. It was so huge. I couldn't miss it. And it was growing so fast. I saw it spread into... I said, Doc, the Lord healed me. And I knew it. That's why I came back after three months. He says, wow. This is amazing. And that is how I had my healing from ovarian cyst. That the doctor said it was growing so fast and it was cancerous. If you are listening or watching me, I've said it earlier and I'm saying it again. Don't be perturbed when you are given a bad report. Because the Bible says, whose report do you believe? We believe in the reports of the Almighty God. That says, let the weak say, I am strong. You are listening to me and you are feeling pains anywhere in your body. You have been given any bad report. Don't go anywhere. Before this program ends, we are going to pray and the Lord will give us the testimonies. Let's go in for life lessons. It is very important to build a relationship with God so that when there is a need, you can be able to fall on him. If you don't have any relationship with the one who created you, how can you go back to him when you are in trouble? If you don't know Jesus at the end of this program, you would accept him as your Lord and personal savior and you will start a relationship with him. The first says, do not panic at any negative report you receive. Just take it to the Lord in prayer. Many of you are watching us. You've been given different kinds of report that is giving you sleepless nights. I'm here to tell you that don't be worried. Don't have sleepless nights or don't care. Just take it to the Lord in prayer. If I say don't care, it means that don't worry your head. The worry cannot do anything for you. You only have to trust in God in prayer. Philippians 4, 6 says, Do not be anxious about nothing, but in everything 
by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. What has the doctor told you? Let your request be known to God in prayer and in thanksgiving, so that you would have your healing like I had mine. The second life lesson says, do not be in a haste to do anything when you receive bad reports. Remember the first testimony. When we received the report, we quickly went into surgery and it turned out to be wrong. It took only the intervention of the King of Kings to restore me back to normal. The second report, we were not in haste. We took it to the Lord in prayer and he came through for us. What have you been told by the doctor or even your family members? Have they told you anything that is giving you sleepless nights? Bible says don't be anxious about anything. With prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request known unto the Lord. So pray a lot, giving your request to the one who created you and knows what is best for you. Don't worry your head over things that God can solve within a twinkle of an eye. He did it for me, he will do it for you. Our third lesson says, learn to praise God in times of difficulty. What would you have done if you were given the report I was given. A big ovarian cyst that has ruptured my ovaries. He suspected was cancerous. That's why it was growing so fast. That would take over my entire womb. But he wanted to spare my life by taking me into surgery. But the creator who created me and had the spare parts for me did the surgery when I decided to worship him and pray. Please, don't be in a haste. Don't be worried when you are giving bad news and learn to worship God in times of difficulty and he will come through for you. Learn to praise God in difficult times. Psalm 34 verse 1 and 2 says, I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. So let the praise of God always be on your lips. And the two says, I will glorify the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Whatever you are going through, you just have to say, thank you, Lord. And he will come through for you. Because when you wallow in, in sadness and, 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 and bathe yourself with tears, the enemy will rejoice. But if you praise God, then the Lord will will come through for you. The last life lesson says, never doubt God when you pray so that you would have the answers to your prayers. James 1 verse 6 to 7. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like the wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. 7 says, that person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. You are praying to the Lord and you are doubting. Bible says don't expect. You are like a wave being tossed by the wind. You know the sea waves is always like this. It's not stable. So you have to be stable and trust God and never doubt. The opposite of doubt is what? Faith. And Bible says that faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of the Lord. You've heard my testimonies. You have heard what the Lord is saying by the life lessons. And so I hope your faith has been built. We are going to zoom into prayer. The Lord did this for me. It was so serious. I know from day one, my mommy told me that the enemy wanted my life, even when she was pregnant with me. You go back three years ago and you would find the episodes that I testified. And then you continue with this one. And you will be a blessing. The enemy does not give up on our lives. Don't give up on God. Pray always. Bible says that don't stop praying. Don't cease to pray. Because God knows that the enemy is always at our necks. 
So if you are listening to us and you have somebody who is sick and has been given a negative report, some people have been given reports of cancers, the last stage of cancer, it doesn't matter. God is here to heal you. Take a bottle of water. Cancer, breast cancer, liver cancer, uh, every kind of cancers. If you have miscarriages, if you have migraines, eye problem, every negative diagnosis you have been given by the doctor, take a bottle of water and let's pray. Ma, 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 ma. Le cosete de mayanda baba. E ma 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 rete pasute yanda daba. E baranda baba. Start thanking the Lord for what he's about to do. If the sick person is close to you, you take water for yourself and take one for the sick person. Whilst we pray, Mashanda Baba Baba, give thanks unto the Lord for his good and his mercies endures forever. Mahando do se te de bayakaya. Re ma 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 kanda baya baba. Ma si ande de bayaba. Thank you, Jesus. Azikura Omamuto Wuni O Waiu Mame Azikura Omamuto Wuni O Waiu Mame Father, we want to thank you and bless your holy name. We give you praise, honor, and adoration for who you are and what you've done for us. Father, on the cross of Calvary, you said it is finished. It is finished for our, our pain. It is finished for all the sicknesses. Father, they pierced your side and water and blood gushed out. This, this moment, we are praying for everyone who has been diagnosed of one disease or the other. In the name of Jesus, we pray that by your stripes we are healed. We pray healing in the name of Jesus. Mashanda basuta yanderebe reka baba baba yandadaba ika sonterebe yate baraba Father, I pray on this water that your children are holding and we turn it into the blood of Jesus. The blood that speaks of better things than the blood of Abel. Be our a portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, if the earth could not hold a drop of your blood and the water that gushed out from your side when you were pierced, Jehovah, the bodies of the, the children of God listening to us, Lord, as they drink this bottle of your blood, it will flush every sickness, every diagnosis, every disease, in the name of Jesus, be ye cancers of various organs. In the leko se te debe, re ka ba 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 yan da da ba, i ka ba ye san te de ba ya. Stomach problems, even ear problems, eye problems, every problem, Jehovah. We pray that as they drink this bottle of the blood of Jesus, it will flush every sickness. In the name of Jesus, your word says. Our lives are hidden in Christ and in God. We pray that, Lord, every diagnosis your children have been given will never take their lives as they connect to us. May this bottle of water that has been turned into the blood of Jesus flush their system and make them anew. We thank you for your word says you hear prayer and you answer prayer. We know that you have heard and we would get a lot of testimonies. Many will testify of the healings that they have received. We thank you. We bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please, as you have received this prayer, every bottle of water you are holding has been turned into the blood of Jesus. You take it in faith and it will cleanse every fibroid, every ovarian cyst, 
every different kinds of cancers that you have been diagnosed. So you take the blood of Jesus, you go back to the hospital to go and be tested. And you, you take our email addresses and send your testimonies. When you are healed, please call us, take our numbers or send us an email and testify of the goodness of the Lord. We'll read all the testimonies when it starts coming in. And I know as you share, many more testimonies will come. God richly bless you. If you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, please lift up your hands and say after me, Dear Jesus, thank you for the cross and thank you for dying on the cross to set me free. From today, I hand over my life to you totally. I pray that you'll be my Lord and my personal Savior. I will never turn back to the world. And I know you have many things in store for me. Forward ever, backwards never. Thank you, Jesus, for my life. Amen. And if you pray this prayer, take our numbers on the screen. Call us and tell us that you accepted Jesus and we'll direct you what to do next. Please take our email address and send us the emails. Don't forget that as you've taken the bottle of the blood, it has flushed everything from your system. So go back and take the report and bring us the good news. Congratulations in advance. God richly bless you. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, TBL TV. Like, comment, and share. You will never be the same. Share to many people. This special episode will do so much for people. And we will thank God together for this episode. God bless you for taking time to watch us. And I hope it has been a blessing to your life. That will be all for this week. See you same time next week. Bye. Thank you.